Since the late 1900s, stents have been used by medical professionals around the world to open clogged or narrowed arteries and reduce the risks of heart attacks. This narrowing of arteries is caused by fatty deposit or plaque buildup that over time restricts blood flow. The solution to this problem is the stent, which is typically little more than a tube of mesh wire that can open and expand the narrowed blood vessel. So how do these stents work and how are they inserted? The standard practice is to insert a balloon-tipped catheter into the artery and move it to the location of the blockage. This balloon has the wire mesh stent wrapped around it. When the catheter is in the proper position, the balloon inflates to expand the mesh stent, then deflates and is removed, leaving only the expanded wire stent in place. Now that the stent has expanded the formerly constricted artery, the optimal amount of blood flow is once again possible. This process is more formally known as coronary angioplasty. The primary issue with stenting is what is called restenosis. Restenosis is the closing of blood vessels due to plaque buildup or vessel inflammation, and it occurs after the angioplasty procedure. Another issue with stenting is instant restenosis, which is the closure of blood vessels after the stent is in place. The issue with both restenosis and instant restenosis is that if it happens, the patient is back to square one, except now they have a foreign substance stuck in their blood vessel that is causing constant irritation. Additionally, the typical treatment for this is to insert yet another stent to reopen the blood vessel, which may just lead to the same issue. The occurrence of restenosis after angioplasty is 17 to 41% when inserting bare metal stents. This number drops to less than 10% when the stents have medicine in them that break down the plaque and thin the blood to prevent clotting. These are called drug-eluting stents and they are a huge innovation in the stenting field. But even if a patient decides to pay three times as much for a drug-eluting stent, they will still face a 10% chance of having a permanent foreign material left in their vessel after the procedure. This is where bioresorbable stents could take over. Bioresorbable stents are similar to standard metallic stents, except they eventually can dissolve or be absorbed into the body. Typically, they are made up of polylactic acid, which naturally dissolves in the body and is already used in other medical areas. Like traditional stents, they can be drug-eluting and are fully dissolved after two years. As with most medical procedures, there are risks involved with the usage of bioresorbable stents. The first issue is that the recoil rate of the bioresorbable stent is 6.7%, which is significantly higher than that of the standard stents, which have recoil rates of 3.4%. This means that during the insertion process, it is possible for the stents to shift slightly out of place. Another downside of bioresorbable stents is that patients need to continue antiplatelet therapy for up to three years after the insertion of the stent or until the total absorption of the stent. This therapy is conducted in order to prevent clotting that can lead to thrombosis. The cost of bioresorbable stents is also a concern, so it costs up to 10 times that of metallic stents. The final and most troubling downside of bioresorbable stents is stent-induced thrombosis. In other words, in the short term, it might be more likely for bioresorbable stents to cause thrombosis so long, in the long term, it is the opposite. While there are downsides to bioresorbable stents, they are far outweighed by the potential benefits. Bioresorbable stents pose a much lower risk for late stent thrombosis than drug eluting metallic stents due to the lack of foreign material exposure in the bloodstream. The results of a study conducted by Surrey's et al. showed that bioresorbable stents can result in long term effective scaffolding, strut apposition, lumen enlargement due to the reduction of plaque, and restoration of vasomotion. Shown here is a figure produced by Sergio Buscieri and David Copadano that shows the potential benefits of bioresorbable stents. It has been clinically proven that stents can be fully reabsorbed into the body. Additionally, it has been clinically proven that this opens the possibility of later surgical procedures on the treated vessels. This is a huge advantage over standard stents, which are permanently left in the vessel and can create complications should further procedures prove necessary. Finally, as it's a relatively new technology, it's difficult to show many of the long-term benefits bioresorbable stents may provide. However, it is assumed that long-term antiplatelet treatment will be much less necessary. Perhaps most importantly, many hypothesize that these stents will reduce many of the long-term problems caused by standard stents.
even now new bioresorbable stents are being made with improved performance. Metal stents may be significantly thinner at a thickness of about 80 microns than current designs, but new bioresorbable stents are being made with a more comparable thickness to help aid their maneuverability. The DE Solve also was designed as all within a year, showing that bioresorbable stents are capable of improving over the years. In summary, both bioresorbable and bare metal stents can use drugs to reduce the chance of restenosis happening, but bioresorbable stents will be absorbed into the bloodstream over time, reducing the chance of late-term thrombosis.